Hey everyone, it's Victor here, and I just woke up, so I'm really sorry. <laughs> Today is the morning of my top surgery, and I'm so excited. I barely slept last night because I was just so like, I want to get it done, I want to get it done. I'm going to be heading over to the hospital in a few hours. It's actually 11 o'clock that I have to go in. I brought Moo Moo with me. <laughs> I couldn't help it. She's not coming to the hospital with me though because I feel like maybe that's a little bit too embarrassing. Um, you're probably wondering, am I nervous? Weirdly, I'm not as nervous as I am excited. I think I've just waited for this so long and I know that it's so routine for the nurses and I know they do so many um, that I'm not really worried. Obviously, I'm a little bit, little bit nervous. There's definitely butterflies there. Um, because I've never been under anaesthetic before, I've never had surgery before, so it's like kind of an unknown, but it's like the same feeling you get if you'd never caught a train before, or, you know, never got in a car. It's the same kind of like, hmm. But it's not like I'm not terrified, um, because I know I'm good in good hands, basically. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get something off my chest. So, um, they've cancelled my surgery. We went in um, at the right time, went in like half an hour early. It was... I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I cry in this. It's... I'm just in shock. Um, we went in and I got taken and I've even got my wristbands on. They were going to admit me. So I've got my wristbands. Um, and we were sitting there for a while. Uh, about, we were, obviously, after I got the wristbands put on, we were sitting there for another two hours, which was really bad for my back anyway. Um, wasn't great. <laughs> Sorry that I looked terrible, I've just seen. Um, then the manager came in and took us into this room and he looked kind of really doomy, you know, which wasn't a good sign. And he just said that they've cancelled my surgery because they don't have enough beds. Which seems so crazy to me because why would you not have enough beds for an organised surgery? You know, you'd think that there would be at least one. They've changed my date, basically. Um, they've said that it'll be the 10th of March, which is couple of weeks away, uh, which isn't the worst news, obviously, it's, it's something. You know, I booked this, we booked this Airbnb for a week, we travelled all the way down, we spent so much money, money that, you know, is, is not to be taken lightly, you know. I haven't even packed my binder, because I didn't think I'd need it ever again. I've been waiting so long for this and I probably shouldn't be vlogging. I've only just got back and it's very fresh and I never I never wanted to cry on my channel. I never wanted to be one of those people. Um but I think it's kinda of justified. I'll get through it, it's fine. I'm just in shock at the moment. Oh. And they said hopefully that on the tenth of March there'll be no chance of it being cancelled, so that's something, I guess, but I just should never have been cancelled in the first place. Hopefully the rest of this vlog will be happy because it will be fast forwarded to um, my actual surgery. I'm sorry it's taken a bit of a miserable turn, but it'll be fine at the end of this video. It'll be, it'll be me. <laughs> it'll be me finally feeling content in my body. And that's how this video will end. I'm just gonna hold on to that for now. And I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'll see you soon. The week after that in Manchester was so strange. I felt so empty and confused by the situation, to be honest. Even though I'm an anxious person, I always think about the eventuality of things in the worst way. I always think about the worst situation that could happen. I never imagined that would be one of them. And we did try to make the best of the week. We, you know, went out into town, did what we could to distract me. But I just felt 
strange, like in this kind of limbo, really. The journey back home at the end of that week was so surreal because I'd imagined it so many times in my head, that feeling of being yourself finally, feeling complete, and I'd waited for that moment for so long. But it was just another journey home. And I've been home for a week now. It's been really strange. I wasn't really given any instructions or advice. They just basically gave me a new surgery date and that's it. They didn't say if I should go back on testosterone or stay off it or where I should go to to get my money back. I had to figure that out on my own. I still haven't got my money back. I've completely come off social media in every respect. I haven't checked my Instagram or gone on YouTube or checked YouTube comments or anything. I just need to distance myself from everything right now. But the new date is confirmed. I did get a letter through. It is the 10th of March and we are leaving tomorrow because today is the 8th of March. Uh, we're leaving tomorrow on the 9th, arriving and then doing the same old thing <laughs> that we did a week ago. And I have a lot of mixed emotions. I genuinely want it to go okay. I want everything to happen as it should have happened to begin with. But I have so many trust issues now and I, I don't know what's going to happen. But it's such a weird time in my life right now. I was doing really well. I was doing better. I've, I've not had the best of luck lately in anything. So this was kind of the icing on the cake for me, thinking that it would be where my luck would change. I'd have my surgery and it would be fine. Um, so, yeah, it's been a bit of a kick in the teeth, to be honest. I'm doing better than I was on the day when it was cancelled, definitely. I'm managing to do stuff. I had a shower the other day, which is a bonus. Um, I got back home, I literally didn't look after myself, I didn't wash, I just was kind of doing all my old depression stuff I used to do. And literally, I've just playing, been playing video games all day and eating food I probably shouldn't be eating. And yeah, so. And this all sounds very depressing and I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I wanna be honest with you, it's not been easy. It's been the biggest shock of my life, to be honest. I've never really experienced anything like this. I've done everything they told me. I arrived there on the right time, the right day, but it still went wrong. And life can do that to you sometimes. But you just have to keep going and you have to try again. Because this is meant to be one of the most joyous times of my life. This is me finally becoming myself. And they can't take that joy away from me. I have so many mixed emotions. I'm angry, I'm sad. I'm just disappointed. <laughs> And the most heartbreaking thing for me is that I'm, I have doubt in my heart going down to get my surgery when all I wanted was it to be the most happy time. But be careful. If you're in the NHS, just unfortunately, you have to think about the worst case scenario and be prepared for it because I wasn't prepared for it. Please just prepare yourself for any eventuality. I don't want you being shocked and hurt the way I was. But yeah going down tomorrow, and I guess we'll see what happens. Manchester again for the second attempt at my surgery. Uh, we're gonna leave just after 10 because my appointment is 11, it's the same time um, as the last one, so we're gonna see how it goes. I have no idea what's gonna happen. Like I've said, I'm trying to stay positive. Um, I actually slept okay up till 5 a.m. this morning, and then when it got to 5 a.m., I was just like, my brain was full of stuff, you know. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go today. Um, but positive thinking, we'll see how it goes. And I'm really annoyed that last time I used this line in my vlog and it didn't even happen. So I'm going to say it again. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to get something off my chest. And I better get it off my chest this time.
It's us. It's us. Victor's not here. And that is... He died. No. No, don't tell them that. That's bad. Don't. Victor, Victor's not here right now um, because he has gone yes. in for his surgery. So we're just back at the house making some lunch. Yeah. But yes, Victor's gone in and it's all gone ahead this time. We yeah. were very worried. They did not seem confident. No, it was a very long way. Yeah, we were there kept... for like almost yeah. two hours again and we weren't sure. So yeah, we're very relieved yeah. that it's actually happening. It's very good. So we're going to yes. go see him so, uh, later yeah. today. So we're making some lunch and having some coffee. Yeah. And the hospital said they'd phone us when he's out, basically. Which will probably be in about another three or four hours. So we're just going to hang around and be anxious all day. Slightly. Although we know he's in good hands. He will be fine. He'll, He'll be, be good. Fine. But... Yes. It's good. It's good. So, it's been about five hours since Victor's gone into the hospital, and we've just had a call saying that the surgery has been successful, and he's all right, and everything's fine, and so we're going to go visit him soon. We're just making some lunch right now. Dinner. Dinner. Why am I, why am I like this? We're making some dinner right now some some late lunch um, and then we're gonna go see him and we're gonna bring him some gifts you've he got him didn't nice things die. he didn't die can you believe it I was fully expecting him to die um, <laughs> I want my bathroom um, but yeah <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't say anything but yeah we we have gotten him some little gifts we he has some some vests that he can finally wear now, yeah. which is nice. Some really nice, like gothic-y vests, Killstar kill vests, and I've I've made him a card. Um, uh, uh, future editing, Victor or me, if I'm editing this, flash up, flash up an image of the card. It's nice. It's nice. It's, it's good. I didn't have a pen, so it's kind of a little rough around the edges, but it's still pretty good. Oh, I'm just. I'm. You guys have no idea how relieved. That we both are, that this is over now, and we've the, had a bit of a stressful day. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm just it's glad good. it's done. It's nice and it's good. I'm hungry actually. Yeah, we're having I'm pasta. Having pasta. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah. We're, we will we will hopefully be able to take some footage in the hospital. Hopefully, I'm not sure. Hopefully, because we don't we'll know what they're going to be like. Definitely take with... some pictures of Victor and his. Drugged up haze. Yay! So maybe Victor will insert those yeah. later. And do like a little compilation. We'll, we'll see what we can manage. Yeah. I'm just so happy it's done. I know. It's good. Oh, well, you might have still talking for me. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Here he is. And it all went fine. It all went good. And I'm a little bit sore, but apparently I meant to be getting painkillers, but they haven't come around yet. yet. So that's a bit fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but Dan and Jay are here. Yeah. <laughs> and um, all the nurses are really lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so it's all good, and I'm excited to discharge. But I think I'm staying in for one night. Yeah, but we don't. It might be more than one. I'm sorry if I look very bad right now. No, you look great. You're yeah. slaying. I'm slaying. Yeah, you look fantastic. Thank you. Look awesome. great. You've got some nice. surprising thing is I said I'd have a sore throat, but I don't. Oh, oh, I don't even have any feeling in my throat. Horse. Really? Like, that's the normal, like, sleepy hoarseness. Yeah, sleepy yes. horse. <laughs> sleepy unicorn. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> it happened. It happened. I didn't think he was going to. <laughs> you did good.
guys. Um, it's been a while since I vlogged. I've actually... I'm so forgetful at the moment, my brain doesn't really work. Um, the few days after that were pretty hard. Um, physically on me, but also emotionally. Obviously I was so relieved it was done and I, I, I'm so happy with how it looks already, which I'm excited to show you my chest, um, even though the bandages are still on. But it looks so good already, it's, it's amazing. And there's been no swelling, no bruising. Um, and my drains were taken out. So that's such relief because most of the discomfort was from the drains, which are basically like one on each side. Um, and it just kind of like drains the fluid from the wound because it's like a closed wound. So it's like for the early stages of healing, it's better to have drains in it. You know, I don't know much about it, but that's that's all I know. Um, but they were so uncomfortable. I, could, I couldn't really sleep. I couldn't get couldn't get into a comfortable position. I had to walk around carrying them. It was like, ugh. But luckily I only had them in, was it three days? It was the day of my surgery. Didn't get any sleep in the hospital at all. It was pretty horrendous. There was like people around me, patients around me that were really unwell and like screaming and throwing up and like hacking up their lungs all night. So it wasn't the loveliest experience that night at all. Um, so yeah, but some, I think it might have been the opiates I was on, but I was actually so cheery. I was great the whole night, even though I stayed up all night watching Queer Eye, that was, that was all I was doing. Um, but the day I got discharged, um, the day after was really weird. First of all, they let me know very early in the morning. Well, I, I'm a, obviously I hadn't slept the whole night, so it, it seemed like later on, but around eight o'clock they said I'd be discharged like really soon and I hadn't let Dan or Jay know because they have to carry all my bags and help me move because I had no mobility. I still have limited mobility but it was worse obviously right after my surgery and it was weird. They got me out of my bed which like I found it really hard to sit in a chair but they made me sit in a chair and the chair was right next to this heater and the sun was pouring in through the window and very slowly I realized I was overheating to a point where I started to feel extremely unwell and obviously I was in pain they couldn't give me any more painkillers for some reason they said they'd give me all they could it was hard like the drains were like pulling on me and oh it was so nasty and basically I felt like I was either gonna throw up or faint and black out and I just was like calling out to the nurses and I was like can someone help me like I'm losing my hearing I'm losing my vision and they were like you know kind of just staring at me and like saying get dressed you need to be discharged. This bed needs to be used. And I get that like, you know, the NHS is going under a bit and they need beds, but it was like the complete lack of care suddenly because they had to get rid of me. And they were like rushing me to get ready and no one was there to help me. And very luckily Dan and Jay arrived just like as I was trying to cool myself down and I drank a bit of water, but the nurses were like, they couldn't, they, they weren't helping me. It was so, so weird. Yeah, I felt really vulnerable at that point, I have to say. It was really scary. Uh, Dan Jay came in, they helped me get dressed because I couldn't put my shoes on, I couldn't put my trousers on, I couldn't, you know, do any of that stuff. I had to get someone to help me, and the nurses weren't. So Dan Jay luckily came, helped me, and it was really weird because the porter that was meant to take me to the discharge lounge or whatever um, was waiting for me. And I was trying to get ready as quickly as I possibly could. So like Dan and Jay were, you know, helping me as fast as I could. And obviously, like, <laughs> I've just had surgery, god damn it. You know, like, I can't, can't rush getting ready when I'm literally like, you know, I've got holes in my chest. So this porter woman was getting like more and more pissed off. She was like, had a wheelchair for me or whatever. And was just like giving like dirty looks to Dan and Jay. And the nurses were like, you have to get ready now, the porter's waiting, you're keeping this lady waiting. And I'm like, I'm keeping her waiting? She's perfectly able-bodied, she's paid to be there. She's like, oh my God, it got, it got like all of us so upset and angry. And eventually when, we, when I got into the wheelchair and we went to the discharge lounge, which was up like four levels, it was like at the top floor, we got there. And then when we got there, they said we shouldn't be there and that I had to go home. Like they didn't know why I was there. So we went to the top floor for nothing. 
And they were like, oh, I don't know why you're here. We haven't got any medications to give you. Why are you here? And I just burst into tears. It just got too much for me. Like it was so, I just felt so vulnerable and that I was being like cast out of the building, like, like a bit of rubbish. And I just couldn't stop crying. And the guy that was like saying, oh, you can go home, wasn't even acknowledging that I was crying. I was like sobbing. And he was just like trying to talk to me like everything was fine. And I was like, I couldn't talk to him. I was literally like, everything just built up to that point. The cancellation, waiting for my surgery, finally getting my surgery and then suddenly being treated like that. Just, oh, it all came out and I couldn't stop crying. And I just sat there for a bit. So we then had to make our way all the way down to the bottom floor again after being taken um, all that way for no reason. Also, I'm going to stand up because my back is being sore. I wonder if I can hold those now. I can't really lift my arms very well, obviously. Um, and also you can probably see that I've still got a little bit of Sharpie. I, I've tried to get it off. I've still got iodine covering my skin as well. I look like I've got a bad fake tan slapped all over me. That's the first thing I noticed when I, wo when I woke up. I was like, why am I orange? That's the other thing I wanted to say. Um, despite the negative experiences I had in the hospital, um, the people that were there in the recovery room with me and like, you know, an anesthetic room were so lovely. Um, there was one particular nurse who I won't name because I don't want to, you know, like for privacy reasons, I don't want to like name people. Um, but she was wonderful, like really, really wonderful. She helped me so much and she was having a laugh with me and I just felt really like happy that she was there. Um, and the nurse that was helping me through the night as well, that I had the button, you know, um, to press, uh, and she would come running um, and help me and she helped me to the bathroom for the first time and all that stuff. And she was really nice. So there were some very, very good people. So it wasn't all bad, but obviously, you know, it was quite traumatic um, to feel that vulnerable. Uh, but anyway, we I was still crying by the time we got down to the ground floor and we got an Uber and the Uber driver very kindly drove very carefully um, back to our Airbnb, which we're at now. And we've been here. I've not like moved um, for the whole time and it's now Saturday. So things are looking up and Teddy's been here to help me. He's not here today. He's uh, gone to work, but he's been helping me through the night. He's basically been doing the night shift uh, with me. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I can think of to fill you in with what's happened. It's just been a lot of resting and um, I'm absolutely knackered. You can probably see like my eyes aren't fully opening. Um, and I did manage to shave today. I haven't shaved the whole time, obviously, because I've, I've been like bedridden. Um, but I managed to shave because my beard was looking very, very weird. Um, so I shaved and I washed my face and just freshened up a little bit. So I actually feel slightly more human today. Um, so that's good. But yeah, while I'm here, I can show you what my chest looks like at the moment. So, this is what I look like at the moment. And it's so strange still, I'm not, you know, like I, it hasn't really set in that it's happened. And I'm so pleased with the shape of my chest because I've, I've worked quite hard muscle building, even though I'm a skinny small guy and obviously I'm not massive. Um, I've got like a really nice natural shape to my chest. That's all muscle. That's not like breast tissue. A lot of trans guys get very upset that your chest isn't completely flat after surgery, but no man's chest is completely flat. That's not natural. So I'm so pleased that I do have like my pec kind of shape, um, and a really nice like indent here. And yeah, so I know it's not the best view at the moment, but hopefully after my dressings get taken off, which will be in two weeks time. So that'll be when I can actually see my chest for the first time and it'll be a bit more uh, real. Yeah, but it's, it's amazing. Um, I, I feel so complete now. I just feel myself, you know, even though it's not quite kind of set in, like I've said, because obviously the bandages are still on, I still feel so happy. And today, finally, because I'm functioning more as a human, um, I actually am starting to really appreciate the, the positives um, because it's been quite hard with all the pain I've been going through um, and the mental exhaustion as well because I haven't been getting any sleep. 
So lack of sleep combined with everything else, I've been a bit stir crazy and just, yeah. But we're all good. And I'm sorry about like the, the low angles and not being able to do a pretty s selfie angle. And the fact I probably look terrible, uh, but I'm not going to apologize for that because right now I'm focusing on healing. And yeah, but that's the update from me because I actually felt like I could vlog today. So we're leaving on Monday and we'll be back home for nine days and then we'll be going down to get my bandages taken off. So that's the next step, but it's done. And I couldn't be happier, so. Oh. There's Teddy. Oh. There's boy. boy. He's on camera. Yes. He's been very good at helping. <laughs> I keep tripping over my He's been moves. very good at helping. Me? No, mm -hmm. Mumu's been the best no, helper. That's true, Mumu is the best helper. She's very clever. So this is the last night in the place. Mm -hmm. And this lighting is really bad. That's slightly better. And I can't hold the camera very high. Um, and yeah, so we're traveling back tomorrow. And um, I'm a bit sad to be leaving Teddy, but be able to see him soon I hope um, <laughs> and uh, I'm feeling good I'm feeling much better the only thing is I'm starting to get a little like nerve I think nerve like readjusting pains because obviously I'm starting to kind of get feeling back in that area so it's a bit weird we tried to go for a walk but it, I, I went out for like five minutes and like felt really dizzy and my, I, I just wasn't managing, so we, we couldn't really do that. So we came back home, and I've just had very low energy, felt a bit lightheaded, but today I actually ate properly and felt kind of functional. So hopefully when we get back home, I can just focus on healing and trying to be a bit more active. And I've still got my anti-embolism socks on, which are very stylish, which I haven't actually shown you yet. But I don't even know if you can see them. Is that even showing you? They're like green. They basically um, squeeze your legs so that your risk of blood clots lowers. So they're very good. They actually have like increased my blood circulation in general. I think I might just keep them on forever. Um, but yeah, this is the last update from the Airbnb and we'll be coming back down uh, in two weeks to get my dressings off and that's when I can finally see my chest. So that's the really exciting bit. Um, but that's a little while away now. We're just gonna focus on healing and stuff and Teddy is falling down and that's the sign of ending this vlog. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs>
quite bruised still. And as you can see, like the bits I've actually had, I've actually had to peel away some bits because I've been getting this kind of like skin reaction. I've been getting little bumps, um, especially in the center of my chest and actually like here, like they're kind of like little spots. Um, and I think it's because of the like glue or something and I've had it on for so long now. Um, so basically I had to kind of like cut away little bits, but that hasn't affected the integrity of these bits, which is the important bits to leave on. So yeah, Tuesday's gonna be the day where be taking them all off and my arms getting really sore holding this camera. Probably shouldn't be doing this. Um, I probably should have it in a tripod, but I'm living life dangerously apparently. But yeah, healing's been going well and just to be at home is such a relief. It was so stressful. Um, when we were in Manchester that whole time, it just, I just felt scared. And obviously with the whole situation with the world right now is like really traumatic, um, especially not, you know, not to be in your safe place. Like my room is my safe place. So it's so nice to be back with my plants and my ever growing banana plant, which is like huge. Uh, but I love him very much. He's actually like growing over my TV. I'm quite nervous to see my chest, obviously, because it'll be the first time I will have seen it properly. And I know that obviously there might be discoloration, there'll be puckering, there'll be, you know, a, so maybe a weird shape around the my nipple. And I just have to kind of accept that right now. I know it will get better in time. Um, but also, perfection doesn't exist. And just the fact that there's that shape, that I'm flat. So, yeah, it's all good. So, yeah, Tuesday. Get my bandages removed, see what it's like. So I guess I'll see you then. So today was the day I take my bandages off. Um, and I did it. It took a long time. Um, it was very sticky. And also, I'm going to show you. But keep in mind that there's still tape around my nipples, which I actually phoned up and asked if I should take off, and they said it's probably better just to let it fall off naturally, which probably should happen quite soon. If I just shower as normal, like act as normal, it, they probably should fall off, because basically it gives the scar a bit more of a chance to really form um, and for that area to be sterilized still. So I thought I would leave them on. So here's my chest. I am so incredibly happy with it. I'm so pleased and it's healed so well so far. There's obviously a bit of blood um, around, but that's natural. That's just dried blood. And obviously you can see the tape that's still there keeping, um, they basically put that there. It's called Steri Tape or something. Um, and it, it just like, while the scars in its early stages um, just keeps everything in place. Um, and it's just the most amazing feeling, I have to say. It's wonderful and I can't wait for more healing time. Um, it's just all going to get better each day. And obviously, the world's kind of crazy right now. I mean, we're officially in lockdown in the UK with this whole coronavirus thing going on. So it's a bit mad. Um, but the nurses said they're going to be there for me on the phone. I can phone them up whenever. Apparently their jobs aren't at risk at the moment. So should be fine. If I have any problems, I can phone them up. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm a very, very happy boy. So here's to more healing. Oh yeah, I meant to say as well, the, how I got the bandages off um, was I basically just sat in the bath. Um, obviously didn't submerge my chest or anything, I just got the shower head and I just like put the water over the bandage so the edges came away easier. I took it very slow. Um, there were points where it was really sore and sticky and I'm, I'm honestly glad that I got to do it myself because I, I don't think I would have been very happy with, it, so, with someone else ripping it off my chest. Um, so yeah, I did it really slowly. Um, I had the two, you know, sort of pine pine nipple, we called them, because they look like pineapple slices, um, around my nipples. Um, they were, like, stuck down with dried blood, so that took a while to get them off. Um, but yeah, um, took me a while, but I just sat in the bath and kind of listened to some Skyrim ambient music and took my time. So that's how I did it. Um, and I, obviously I had to do it on my own at home because of the whole coronavirus thing. You know, I couldn't travel down. So that's why on the phone they advise me to do it myself. So that's basically it. So I'll update you again at the weekend when these are off. And then I guess that'll be my finished vlog for now. Obviously, I'll update you on my healing. Uh, but yeah, so it's exciting. I can't believe I've got this far. I can't believe I'm home. 
um, and I got the surgery. I mean, I feel so lucky that I got this surgery. It was such a touch and go experience with everything that's going on. I feel very lucky. Focus, please. Thank you. Today is Saturday. Um, the day that I post this, actually, I'm just about to finish editing this vlog. And yeah, I took the stereo tapes off um, a few days ago, and I finally can see my chest as it's meant to be. And it's amazing. It's such a crazy feeling to look in the mirror and feel complete. Despite the fact I still have Sharpie marks all over my nipples, because I still do, I still have my, like, the tattoos, the little marks that the surgeon puts on um, to mark out my chest and, like, where to cut and where to, you know, all the measurements and things like that. I still have those on. I've been trying to wash them off, but they're still here. So, yeah, the final reveal of my chest will be a bit strange because, obviously, I still have all the pen marks on my chest, but they'll eventually come off. I don't want to rub too hard. Um, I've been trying to clean them, but, um, yeah, they're a bit annoying. Bear in mind as well, I still have the kind of weird spot allergic reaction thing that I had to the adhesive on the surgical bandages. So yeah, bear in mind that it's not absolutely perfect and clean and amazing. There's still a little bit of scabbing as well. Just wanted to say that before I showed you my chest and did the big reveal. It's a bit of an awkward angle because I wanted to get my banana plant in the background. So forgive me. But here is my chest. You can see my back in the mirror as well, that's quite cool. Um, I'll come a bit closer so you can see. Yeah. So there you go. I'm really pleased with how it looks. Um, this side, the scar is much more obvious. Um, I was trying to figure out why. Um, because this side has hardly got any stretching at all. And I think it's because I, I was using this arm, early stages of, of recovery, I was using this arm for all the, all the things, like, you know, opening doors, doing all that stuff, because this side was much more sore. Um, so, but weirdly, it's kind of lucky in a way because they've sort of evened each other out. That one was much smaller than that one. So they kind of like, it's sort of serendipitous really. And you know what? I love scars. I think scars are such a wonderful like metaphor for what you've been through. And I'm just gonna tilt the camera up a bit so you can kind of see me as well talking. So it's not just my nips, cause that's a bit weird. I find scarring really beautiful. Um, when I see double incision scars as well, I think they're really beautiful and my scars are beautiful in their own way as well. Um, and I just can't wait to see how they heal over time and to see what shape my chest kind of settles into and, you know, what the areolas and nipples look like long term. And it's just exciting. It's exciting to finally have, you know, my true body, my, my, my real body. It just feels so right to wake up every morning now and look down and just breathe and, and be and bloom and everything. Just, it's an indescribable feeling. It really is. But yeah, you can see the Sharpie marks uh, and all the weird dots everywhere. That's just from my allergic reaction to the adhesive, but they're starting to fade already. I mean, they're much better than they were when I first took the bandages off. So there's definitely progress there. And I can't believe I'm here talking to you guys after everything I've gone through, not just the wait for this surgery, but the experience down there and how nightmarish it was in the hospital and that whole week when the cancellation happened, I just never thought it was going to happen. So it's crazy to be here now talking to you. And I know as well that the world right now is a kind of scary, unsure, un unprecedented place to be in right now but this experience this experience of feeling so lost and so empty when I had my cancellation and then coming out the other side and now I'm just healing really well and feeling so happy and myself it shows you that bad times never last they change times change things change they don't stay the same so no matter what the world is going through no matter what you're going through right now that's not going to be your whole life this is going to change. This whole thing is going to change. And every nightmare can become a dream. So yeah, this may have been a nightmare to go through, but my god, it was worth it. Sometimes the hardest things you go through 
are the things you need the most to build your character to make you stronger. So don't wish those times away. You should embrace them and realize that there's a reward at the end of suffering for something. And that's why I'm always going to love my scars as well, because it shows... It shows suffering and healing from suffering, and that's something I find very metaphorically beautiful. So, yeah. Here I am, and I will update you on my healing to come, obviously. So I'm excited to update you on that and see how it goes. Thank you so much for taking this journey with me, and I know that a lot of you have been around since before I was on tea, and I am so grateful to you guys for sticking with me all this time and seeing my journey and my transformation. And obviously it's still going, you know? I'm, I'm always moving forward with myself and my self-discovery and working on myself. So I very much hope that you'll be there for those journeys and those adventures in the future. But anyway, for now, Thank you all so much for watching. Whatever you do, never give up hope. And I will see you very soon.